gets inside is hammered well, by that's Oakley. That's going to be two shots in the ball. We already see the presence of Charles Oakley. We saw this in the Detroit series. Early in the game, Charles Oakley did the same thing to Rodman. You see it right there. You know, a lot of people feel they're passing out a double team against the Pistons. Oh. Wilkins quickly to the hoop and then the block. Paxson spots up from Jordan. He just doesn't miss. Anytime Pippen or Jordan get in there, Patrick Ewing standing right there. Impressive defense. Five to shoot. Pippen has it blocked by Ewing with one on the shot clock. Jordan buries the jumper. You fought against Miami in the second half last Wednesday. There's Pippen with a block. Chicago ball. Starks and Jordan into a sumo wrestling match down there on the post. Now Jordan has him isolated. Five to shoot. Spin and back and baseline. <laughs> and both saw that tongue come out. And Jordan has 20. It's a one-point Knicks lead. Burt Wright saying no thank you. Look at that battle going on. He pushed away from the block. There's the double. You knew, the they, were, you knew they were going to change their defense. They're going to start doubling Ewing. Jordan with a rebound. And he's fouled. Now see that's a bad foul by Ewing because now they're going to shoot two free throws. That's his fourth foul. That's frustration. Chicago waited to bring the double team to late. So now they're going to force New York to make outside shots. Good block out. Michael Jordan with a great rebound. And instead of getting back defensively, Ewing gets his hand in there. The Knicks have not won in Chicago Stadium since 1987. They lead by one. Jordan, what a move inside. That's, that's ridiculous. That's so good. That, that's ridiculous. <laughs> End-to-end -end pressure from the Bulls in game number one. And when they did, uh, the Knicks handled it very well, particularly Anthony Mason off the bench. Ewing. Hold it. We've got a little action here going already. Xavier McDaniel and Horace Grant. Everybody trying to call tempers. Neither team wants to lose one of these players. Going to talk to him right now. We'll have to see what's going on underneath the basket. He, there's the contact underneath between McDaniel and there's the push and the slap with Horace Grant. And now you're going to see McDaniel bump against Scottie Pippen. So we had a loose ball foul on Xavier McDaniel, then a double technical called after the shoving on McDaniel and Horace Grant. But they bothered him with screening across the other night. Pippen on the drive, Ewing with the block, Oakley the rebound. Three on two. Jackson passing to McDaniel for the jam. We're tied at eight, 740. There's the double up and the cross underneath. How about the block? And they're going to call a jump ball. Wave off the basket. Pippen blocked McDaniel and they'll jump it up. Xavier McDaniel, if he would have shoveled the ball off to Oakley, Oakley had a layup. You're going to see the crossing underneath. There's the pass off. Now, had he just shuffled the ball over, you don't see Oakley. He's right beside him. Had he just handed the ball off, it would have been an easy to the young John Starks. You saw what that did. There's a steal. Jordan alone. He ain't gonna miss 
back. Only a second field goal of the second half. Bulls by five. Crowd back into it. Fratello and certainly the surprise of this series uh, has been the play of the New York Knicks a very physical New York Knicks club as the Detroit Pistons can certainly attest to and their physical style has apparently affected the Chicago Bulls. Bob there's no question New York was determined to start out from the beginning of game one and play it their way their style of play a very bruising one at that. Throughout the entire 48-minute contest, there will be bodies up against bodies. Nothing comes easy. No easy shots, no easy scores. As a result, New York has averaged seven more rebounds a game, seven more personal fouls a game at the end of game two. Cool area product, and it's only fitting that we make the transition from one heartthrob to another. Here's Ahmad Rashad. All right, thanks, Marv. I talked to Michael Jordan about his lack of dunks and his lack of driving to the hole. And he said, you know, there's two reasons why I have not gone in the paint trying to dunk. One name Ewing, the other name Oakley. Makes sense to me. Last week, I reported that you, uh, Pippen and Jordan called Oakley to encourage him to beat Detroit. They did. Then Lambeer, after the game, encouraged the Knicks to beat the Bulls. They did. Well, today, I found out there have been no phone calls to the locker room. So I guess that these two teams will just have to find the inspiration from among themselves. And with this crowd and the way it is here today, they'll have no problem doing that. My the floater. Jordan and Paxson in the backcourt. Pippen up front with Grant and Cartwright. Grant is stopped and foul. Foul committed by Oakley. Well, I wouldn't say it's even close to a flagrant foul, but I would also say that he wasn't trying to blow him a kiss on this one. He obviously sent the message here that if it's going to be a layup, you're going to have to make a tough one. And after Chicago scores, so they can get into the half-court offense. That time, 17 seconds, but Jordan with the steal. Wilkins able to foul him, and Michael Jordan going the length of the court and stuffing emphatically, but it will not count. Next physical play throughout the series, which has been a concern for the Bulls. We asked Coach Phil Jackson, are the Knicks now more physical than Detroit? Well, Detroit's more physical team. Uh, I think Detroit has a ability to play a little more physical game, but what has happened is the uh, Knicks have learned that kind of physical uh, combat from playing the, the uh, Detroit Pistons, and they've es escalated their physical uh, defensive attack. And um, right now, it's what we have to play through. You have to learn to play through that. And sometimes, though, you know, we're hanging on for our life out there with the ball or under duress with physical bodies on us, and we're outweighed and outmanned at most every spot except the guard spots. Yeah. Closing minutes. Normally an 83% free throw shooter during the regular season. The Bulls 13, the Knicks 11. The Bulls continuing the pressure. Wilkins with a facial going right at Cartwright. Again, the Chicago defense causing the Knicks to scramble. When you're scrambling and you have their defense running around, then you want to take it to the basket, make something happen, and so what if Big Bill rotates over? When you can get up the way Wilkins can, you send it down with a lefty slam. He loves it. The Garden crowd loves it. Chicago 17. The New York Knicks 13. Here's the double team on Jackson. The steal by Jordan. And Michael Jordan hits on the reverse. And the Knicks again are having big problems. A few moments ago, the double team taking place right over the half court line. And Mark Jackson, who's much smaller, a good strong trap. Jordan with the hand out that gets the deflection. And then just to remind those fans that think he may have forgotten how to dunk it. No, it does a little reverse for you. I think that text winner told us that during the course of the year, we had mentioned that you stayed away from posting Jordan up a lot this season. He said, yeah, but we know we can always go back to it in the playoffs whenever we want to. McDaniel, he was stopped. Terrific play by Pippen from Starks is called for his first. Why is Chicago's defense so good? Because they are a swarming defense. They help each other out and then tremendous athleticism. That was a clean block coming from Bob. 34 for 47 percent. Chicago controls the tip and here comes Jordan. It's 
about two minutes past two Eastern time, and Michael Jordan has done the unthinkable. Post up, give yourself a chance to win, wear them down in the fourth quarter. Maybe they'll have turnovers, maybe they'll miss free throws, maybe they'll miss shots. Step to the left by Gerald Wilkins. He extends this defense and puts pressure on here in the third quarter. Looking ahead down the road to have energy left. Oh, Horace Grant came up big with the rejection. Here's Scotty Pippen going all the way. It will not count. Offensive foul. Jordan with the hesitation. He tried to hang, looking for the better shot. Pippen and McDaniel going down. Repelling New York to the lead, but now Chicago leads by three as Michael Jordan is able to hit on the slam off the mark. So it will be Nick Ball. A little give and go basketball. Pass, cut without it, and if your teammates are unselfish, they'll give it back to you to the best finisher in the game. We'll have it for you starting 6.30 Eastern time. Here's Jordan. Scott Williams able to get to the loose ball, but he's bottled up Jordan with the recovery. And Jordan is fouled. The basket counts in a foul, and Michael Jordan very upset about the way he was muscled. What Jordan's upset about is Xavier McDaniel rotating across, just basically goes after his body to try and stop it. Jordan with the strength, the concentration, and now he is upset because he understands if he lands the wrong way, that could be the end of the season for him. Ahmad Rashad earlier this year had spent a day with Michael and gone through his workout training program and said it's really a difficult one. This guy has built his body up and added great strength to a great talent. 26, Patrick Ewing came on late. He has 27, and the Chicago Bulls have taken a two games to one lead in this best of seven playoff series. A very physical game once again. I have a feeling we will hear some complaints from Michael Jordan and the Bulls about the Knicks' physical style. Bulls went at 94-86. This has been a presentation of the NBA on NBC. Six, seven points. Ewing jumping out to help, leaving Cartwright open. McDaniel knocks it away. Bill Jackson looking for a foul. Armstrong for Cartwright, and he is clobbered. Mission has ruled the bell will save the player, except in the final round. As Cartwright has said, after doing one for four from the field. I don't want to be a dick. When you have a guy with the size of Scottie Pippen and the skill ability and then a Michael Jordan at the other end, you can do things like this. Now, you're wondering how it may have started. Movement without the basketball. If you denied, fake one way, go without it, and then hope you have a teammate like Pippen to deliver. Took his eye off the ball for an instant. Shot clock to three. Ewing with the steal. It's a three on one. Jackson behind the back for Wilkins. Jackson spinning and nowhere to go. Oakley with the save, but Grant getting to it. And here's Pippen taking it by himself. He had Jordan ahead of the field. Perhaps Scotty fearing another uh, breakaway miss by Michael. Well, oh. Gerald Wilkins gambled. He saw he was outnumbered, so he came up right there hoping that Scotty would throw the pass and he'd get a piece of it. Numbers three on. So Cartwright call for his second, and that is Robin Fecker, the heckler, who usually is uh, seen at bullet games in Landover, reading from the Jordan rules, one of the uh, most favorite uh, books. He's right near the Chicago bench. I can't believe that he has turned up here at the Garden for a Nick Chicago 
playoff game. Robin Thicker, an attorney in Washington. I believe he's handling some of your legal work. Here is Pippen. Rebounded by McDaniel. Out with Wilkins. And the Bulls want to talk it over. Well, Michael hanging in. He's trying to shake it off. That Chicago foul was called on Grant. The Bulls have four team fouls. Knicks with three. McDaniel with the spin. He thought he was fouled. Nothing called. Oakley. And he's hit by Pippen. A lot of trash talk. If you notice, you have done none of that today. He's just... Got his head in the game and staying strictly with the business. Meanwhile, a has been called on Phil Jackson once again. That's his second. So he has been ejected. Phil Jackson hit with a second technical of the night. Head coaches in this league have a very officials you can talk to how far you can push him i think early in the game phil jackson wanted a technical at this point i don't think he wanted it and i think that he felt dick bavetta is a guy that you can talk to and is not going to all of a sudden do something irrational like tossing a head guy out of the game phil waving goodbye to the garden crowd one time new york nick and a very popular player here in new york spent 11 years with the next coach by red holzman who Fourth quarter is underway. Mason not able to handle that pass as the Bulls went to the trap. And now McDaniel on the recovery finds Starks. It's the next 68. And the Bulls, 67. Mason lost it. Recovered. Starks for three. upset a very hard foul handed out by the Knicks and Williams understandably did not like it well Jordan the great ability to elevate and find open teammates and yes as you said a very hard foul Xavier McDaniel is sitting on the floor I'm gonna take a 20 second timeout I don't think Pat Riley sees you better get a 20 second timeout He's trying to call it. Now they get 20 seconds. McDaniel is up, walking over to the side. And he's mad. I didn't see what happened. It looked like he's upset with Oakley. It looked like he and Oakley said something to each other. Sure does. And they are very angry. Ball game. New York 5 out of 8 from the floor. Cartwright. There's again that's, that's, nice deja vu. that's that's exactly the same play that we saw in our opening that you talked about here comes hard right here comes oakley it's an excessively hard foul it's two shots and the ball rebound he can't hold it four on three Going to the line for two free throws. Ewing and Jordan exchanging words as they cross the timeline. They're right in each other's face right now at the top of the key. The two superstars. And they're friends also, which goes to show you that that friendship goes out the window with Patrick Ewing. The Knicks with an opportunity to take the lead in this ball game with only 14 seconds. Ewing, or make that. Jackson hit the floor hard. He slipped on condensation, and the Bulls get the jam. Oh, what a big play! Of the Philadelphia.
Philadelphia 76ers. It's a pleasure to have you here, Charles. Fun watching the game with this guy, too. Watching your buddy Michael Jordan, Patrick Ewing going head-to-head. -head. What do you think they were saying there late in the half? Well, I think there's a little hostility building up. I mean, because this is a do-or-die situation when you're in the playoffs. This is obviously the pivotal game in the whole series. You know, before the game, you had Phil Jackson after game four complaining, saying, you know, it's too much rough stuff. Dick Versace, our colleague, is fond of saying NBA means no babies allowed. Is Jackson maybe uh, breaking that rule? Well, I think uh, his team it doesn't handle physical play well, and he's just doing what's best for his team. Obviously, right now, you see the series has been real physical, and that's why the Knicks are playing so well. Three. Those are the loose balls that the Knicks got in New York. Uh-oh. <laughs> Michael Jordan slips inside. He has 15. Tonight, looking for you. Now back to Patrick. He's hit hard. Both Jordan and Grant went at him. It's on Michael. Street. Starks had a hold of him there. Seven to shoot. McDaniels rips it loose. Jordan! Hard foul from Anthony. Now, there's been bad blood between these two guys all year. Anthony took a foul earlier in the year on Michael in the regular season. And Michael did not like Nick says penalty. Loose balls. Remember how important loose balls are. It looks like New York has it. Uh-uh. Speed and quickness. Michael Jordan. There's the foul. Michael wanted to go to him. He said, this team on the floor, they're in great shape to win this basketball game. Into Ewing against Purdue. Blocked big by Scotty Williams. Seven eighteen remaining from Chicago Stadium. Looking for Jordan to post up against Wilkins. He couldn't get it. Seven. Look at the quickness. Mason with a hard foul as B.J. Armstrong goes to the hoop. See, I think that New York has to be very careful here, okay? They are all, almost committing this foul intention. I'm not so sure Mason couldn't have got the shot blocked. And then he comes down strong. He's six feet eight or whatever. McDaniel gets on him, and B.J. Armstrong Puts up a big one. Pippen missed the offensive follow. It's three on one. Starks. Jackson to Starks. He's fouled by Pippen. Oh, That's Scotty right. Pippen is okay. Scotty took a nasty fall on his back. You could hear it all the way over here when Pippen went over the back of Starks and hit the. He hit so very hard. It brought this and you know what? to a stunned silence. And I want to say this in a nice way, but there's not much padding back there either for him to fall on. When Scotty goes down, this is, you see the great block, and there's the foul, and boom. You know, the only thing that saved him was the fact he rolled Starks' his back down. Mo Mo Jordan calling the plays. Well, Michael, Michael Smart, he's going to he's going to make them take a foul on him, or he's going to get to the basket. Three-point play, Wilkins fouled him. How many times has this crowd at Chicago Stadium seen that? Let me tell you what happened, okay? I wish we could have had a camera on Phil Jackson, because Phil Jackson, as Chicago came down the floor, said, I want to make four passes. And Michael said, uh-uh. I want the ball clear out. We're going to run open. And there we broke and we raised the consciousness, okay, of everybody, including Chicago. They held in game two. They broke in game three. We held. They went back home and held. Now it's our chance to hold. I mean, it's it's the way it goes. It isn't uh, there isn't a secret to it. Uh, whether you should be at three to two or down or out of it by now. I mean, that's the way these games have been played. They've been. All games have been and could have been determined in the last minute and a half of the game. So it's been playoff basketball at its best. And my message to them was that we cannot and should not and will not waver at all. There'll be no doubt, no wrath, no anger, no nothing. I mean, it's, it's the way it's supposed to be. Jackson looking to post up on Paxson. Jordan threatening to come over to help. Jackson rejected by Pippen. Scotty Pippen with a terrific play. Now Pippen goes all the way. And he was fouled. He was blocked. There's Jackson getting it back out. Wilkins. And 
Pippen able to reach for it. Here's Pippen. Oh, what a move by Scotty Pippen. Cartwright played him so well, but Ewing is feeling it tonight. Pippen with the spin rejected by Ewing. Not a good shot. Just under one minute. Remaining first half. Jordan with the shake and bait. And a spectacular move to cut it to a six-point lead. The rebounds. Off the double team. Jackson with the shovel. Here comes Paxson. Jordan with the save. Oh, what a pass. And Grant fouled by Wilkins. Wilkins for Ewing. Oh, what a play by Jordan. He stopped Ewing. Patrick takes the low route, however, in his attempt to get there without a dribble, he really didn't give himself advantage of his own size with that move. Once again, McDaniel putting moves on Levingston. Oakley with the save, and McDaniel is fouled. Words between oh. McDaniel and Levingston. We got some of the great talkers going on out there. They are one-time collegiate teammates. They both played at, at Wichita State. Cliff Levingston, though, has a great sense of humor. And, and, and you wonder how seriously he's yeah, taking all this. He's fun. The first thing you think of with him is fun. And here's McDaniel working in close. Tough moves, faking. A lot of pressure on the boards. And on the follow-up, thanks to Oakley, McDaniel ends up at the line. Not yapping at each other. Not a bad front line when you uh, <laughs> consider uh, Levingston and along with the uh, Chicago affiliate. Pippen on a steal. Pippen, oh, he is ripped by Starks. And that could be, yes, it is a flagrant foul. Pippen is shaken up. A flagrant foul called on John Starks and called for. Now Anthony impatiently throws that ball, hoping that it's going to work out well. He had no vision. Starks, looking like he's going for the ball, was not fortunate to get the basketball. He got too much. And it looked like a double hit with Mason. Take a look after the initial hit. Now Pippen takes another shot from Mason. As he falls. Oh. Well, Pippen fell down. Crowd wanted to travel. Instead, it's a steal. Here's McDaniel. And let's see. Will that be a clear path to the basket? Foul? Yes, it will. Shooting foul. Able to take it to the basket. Oh, the Bulls forget about him. He was going at half speed in that was wide open for him. Here's Purdue. Oh, he is hit. Hit hard by Mason, who looks to challenge Purdue. I think he stuck his tongue out at him. Purdue took a swipe at Mason. Pat Riley trying to break it up along with the officials. Anthony Mason was taunting Will Purdue and Michael Jordan trying to settle it down. That's Bush League if Mason did that. Let's see how the officials handle this. It is a flagrant foul on Mason. So Purdue will go to the line to get two plus possessions. Second flagrant foul called on the Knicks tonight. By the Knicks. Ewing is fouled. Yes! And it counts! Oh, that's an enormous field goal. Starks to Ewing, who makes an amazing shot. Ewing getting inside, beating the Bulls. Quarter, pressure by Chicago. 
Mitch should not be in any rush to get the shot up, in particular with the Bulls over the foul limit. Wilkins for Ewing. Yes, and it counts! We are seeing, and this is the highest compliment that can be paid an athlete, a Willis Reed type performance by Patrick Ewing. Yes, this is, this is, has reached heroic proportion. When the New York Knicks faced the Chicago Bulls in game six, they weren't thinking about their own elimination. No, these Knicks sense something special about this improbable playoff run. Even the sight of Patrick Ewing limping off with a sprained ankle didn't mean the end. For the Knicks faithful, it rekindled memories of Willis Reed and that championship year when he found the courage to overcome injury. And in a similar inspired effort, Patrick Ewing rejoined the battle. And battle he did. He threw his will into his work and his wounded body into the opposition. And when it was done and he had nothing left to give, only then was he led away victorious. Now it's Michael Jordan and the Bulls who also face elimination. Can they find the courage and the championship effort needed to win? Or are we about to witness one of the greatest upsets in basketball history? Pat Riley and his Knicks believe it's possible. Today, for one of these teams, the title quest continues. For the other, time runs out. is the NBA on NBC. The 1992 NBA Playoffs. Cartwright with the save. Jordan with the step, and he's fouled. We've seen the aggressiveness right from the start by the Chicago Bulls. Michael saying no jumpers to start out with. Take the ball to the rim. Now, I don't think that ankle would bother him one bit. Ewing. Oakley. Kept alive by McDaniel. And he's rejected. Anthony Mason, who has played well in the series, has come on for the first time this afternoon. We're down to four minutes remaining. First quarter, Jackson with the step, Grant with the rejection. Actually, Chicago leads. Up by Cartwright away from the ball. And McDaniel and Pippen are having words. Jake O'Donnell separates the two. The body's down low. We're going to get the little hole, the grab, the push, the shove, and this is what Jake O'Donnell is trying to clear up right away. Talking to both players. McDaniel posting up and faces up. And for offensive foul. That's number two on the x man The timeout was called. Both clubs going at each other. Michael Jordan and Xavier McDaniel having words. Double technicals were called on McDaniel and Jordan. What well, we said a moment ago down on the baseline foul that Jake O'Donnell was stepping in to send the message. This is step number two in the message sending process. The next one, someone's going to be ejected from this basketball game, which is a very serious step. Jake O'Donnell. Field goal. Starks uh, saying that the ball was resting too much uh, on the palm of his hands, and he made that adjustment. Meanwhile, Pippen is hit hard, and he'll go to the line. Let, let me say this. Scott Lear in the series. Armstrong for Pippen.
The Bulls. The King has come on for Bill Cartwright. King missed the first two games of the series with the flu. Sat out Thursday night with a bad throw. Here's Jordan splitting through. Jordan with the steal. And then it's stolen by Starks. McDaniel chased by Jordan. It's a clean block. Whose game is it? It's Michael Jordan's game. And that's why Magic said before he was demanding the basketball from his teammates. He knows right now he's got it. He feels it. He splits the potential tap. And then, after scoring, comes right back with a terrific defensive play. Last touch by Starks. That was one of the most remarkable sequences that you will see Michael Jordan doing it in every phase of the game. First the bucket, then the steal. Oh, what a spin by Jordan! Bulls lead it 74-62. Add this to the Michael Jordan. Well, most of the time he's been coming to the middle. This time he fooled everybody, went baseline, and went up under for two. The big thing here is how quickly he has to make a decision. Nobody in the middle, he takes a quick look, then comes back, avoids Ewing rotating over. The I don't think today. <laughs> no, you think they may remember that, right? Oh, Armstrong and Starks want to go at each other. B.J. Armstrong pointing in the direction of John Starks. That's number five on Starks. Now, here's how this developed. Let's take a look. B.J. trying to take away the path under the basket, so Starks changes direction and throws B.J. down to the floor. But you know what? Everybody will get down as they hear it from the crowd. A three-pointer to conclude matters. Bulls 109, Knicks 81. And players come together here in the final seconds. Only eight tenths of a second remain. And Levingston to the line. <laughs> this is something here. Uh, I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be in this uh, series next season. Because this is going to be a war in the regular season with these two teams. I feel that uh, Charles with his lookout on Oakley in the collision with Grant. And Smith called for the foul. They feel with that height advantage, Smith can take advantage of Pippen. As uh, you look at the foul called on Smith, Mason and Anthony sit down. Ewing. But then that's what makes players great and teams great, the ability to get off a shot and make it when you need it. Oh, Pippen was hit hard. Things beginning to get a bit rough. Mason called for the foul. Mason with his second. It wasn't that Pippen got thrown to the ground. He's losing his footing right there as Oakley tries to prevent the shot from going up. It's just, of course, natural that he's going to go down. It made him look to some extent that he threw him to the ground. I don't think Oakley intended it. has won Academy Award honors, and he's all right. Oh, and apparently there were words. Smith and Pippen had words, and Pippen came chasing after Smith. It starts back where I mentioned him, but Scottie Pippen came from quite a distance behind to run him down. It's Pippen that throws the pass off the dribble. Rivers looks like he's got clear sailing, but Pippen from way behind catches him, and then it's the momentum which sends Rivers to the ground. He immediately grabs his head as if it hit down on the floor. From behind, 
Pippen goes for the block. There's no intent there to throw Rivers' body into the ground. It's just two great athletes and the speed and acceleration that causes this. Looks to be a little act on the part of, of Doc to draw a flagrant. And then Pippen came racing in the direction of both Smith and Rivers. It looked like the target was Smith. And the officials are talking it over. Let's see how they handled it. Apparently no flagrant being called. And Pippen has to be restrained. We'll be back. Seven. Game two here at the Garden on Tuesday. And then the scene shifts to Chicago. Pippen hits the three-pointer. Scotty Pippen from downtown. 19 for Pippen, who has certainly responded here the second. A foul committed before the shot of death. Bill Cartwright called for the foul. After Pippen hits the three, he runs back. He's looking at Charles Smith the entire time and then makes sure that he gets into his defensive position there quickly. A little bit of trash talk after. Best of Jordan, who shoots over. Rebound over. Very tough defense played by, by John Stark. Now Jordan back reaches in and steals. And a loose ball foul. Started by Pippen. Gets another three for John Starks. That's his third from downtown. Shot clock at 10. Paxson guarding Starks. Starks for three again. That's his fourth three-pointer. By Chicago. Doing setting the pick. Cartwright jumps out. Starks for three. Mason trying to do it off the dribble. And he threw the foul. It counts! The basket counts and the foul! That's why coaches tell players when you commit a foul, make sure he doesn't get the shot off because of the continuation call in the NBA. The strength of Anthony Mason to draw the contact and then still get the shot up. To knocking it away. The Knicks using the clock. Five on the 24. Mason able to free himself up as Grant went for the steal. Rivers and Pippen in each other's face as play just continues. And now a timeout is called. And Rivers was able to come up with the basketball. Then, after great defense with two seconds remaining, a terrific feed pass into the post to Mason. In the low right-hand corner, Rivers doesn't like the fact that Pippen knocked him to the ground, so he's got a little bit to say. Patrick Ewing got off to the good start the other day. Here is Jordan. Rebound, back tap. Jordan around Ewing, and he is fouled. Foul committed by Charles Oakley. So right away, we see Jordan involved almost every time at the offensive end for the Bulls. Oakley with the rebound. And his pass broken up by Jordan. Beautiful play by Michael Jordan. As it kicked off the leg of Charles Oakley. Spike Lee got in the way of Jordan coming up court. Spike, they double up on Anthony. Starks had it knocked away by Paxson, and here comes Pippen giving it up. Michael Jordan. Oh, Jordan with some words for Greg Anthony. Back to an episode, December 13th, 1991, game in Chicago, Greg Anthony's rookie season. Here's the play where Jordan did not appreciate the hard foul by Anthony, threw the ball at, at Anthony, and uh, that leads us to what took place here just uh, a moment ago with Jordan able to stuff at home and uh, then had some words for Greg Anthony. Well, the unselfish play of Scotty Pippen giving that ball to Jordan for the dunk. And Jordan finishes with a little verbal. Uh, changed his mind. Went to the fadeaway. Rebounded by Smith. Oh, Smith putting the elbow to the chin of Williams who did not like it. 
Stacy King. Charles Oakley very unhappy, flashed that ball to official Danny Crawford. Here's Smith after that uh, rebound a moment ago, trying to free himself. Gave a little extra elbow in the direction of his third foul. Here's Jordan getting inside and rejected by Ewing. Will try to post up, feeling for Starks. And he's stopped by Starks. Oh, Michael Jordan now having his difficulties. Knicks trying to make a 2 0 in this best of seven. The Bulls want to go back to Chicago. Tied at one. Starks for three. Yes. Well, got Clark running down. It's at five. George Neely picked it off. Shot clock at two, starts. Oh, what a shot! He just did beat the 24 with Jordan in his face. The Knicks by 13. The Chicago Bulls with only 14 points in the third quarter. And look who's heating up now in the second half. These are the kind of shots opposing coaches like their opponents to take. But John Starks now for the second game in a row. Jordan guarding Rivers now switches off to Starks. Here's Ewing. Nice fake off to do. Jordan with the save. Look out. Mason got it back. Ewing. It counts. And the foul. Number five committed by Williams. Discontinue his call. Oh, Pippen is upset. Oh, that's a technical. He's been thrown. He threw the ball hard at Bill Oaks, and he's been ejected. Oh, now Jordan chasing Oaks. Phil Jackson could get hit with a second. Scotty Pippen has been tossed. Oh, that's an enormous move. And now Pippen is being kept away by his teammates. That's going to be debated, Marv, over and over again. Force Pat Riley into making a move. He's doing a good job keeping Jordan out by half court, knocking time away. But Jordan is able oh. to first right and he is walloped by Anthony, and that should be a flagrant. Yes, it is. He's out, Marv. Oh, he's been thrown out. Bill Oaks at it again with a big call. You know, this is an answer right here. Now, normally, it would be a flagrant foul, but that's that's a major well, move to throw Anthony Look out. how far high Anthony goes in the air. Well, that's a bad foul. There's no question Hard about it. Hard to say he was looking to play the ball because he was so yeah. far behind. 145. Remaining number four. Here's Jordan. Finding Purdue. Rejected by Ewing. By Oakley. Here's Ewing. And oh, look out. Cartwright submarine. Right. Accidentally taken down by Oakley. They were both going. What a spill. Well, Bill, Bill Cartwright now going up in the air to play some defense. Whoa. Undercut by Charles Oakley. We're down to 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Starks. Yes. What a move by Starks who was able to sky to the basket. Give the Knicks a five-point lead with 47 seconds remaining in the fourth. Here it is. B.J. Armstrong expects help now. He's looking around. He gets picked off. No help comes. And Starks goes. Oh, so big. And look who was at the top. None other than Michael Jordan. And he couldn't do anything about it. What a spectacular move. That's as Jordan-like, Marv, as any other player in the NBA can get. Chicago, 6.37 remaining first quarter, and some words exchanged. Scotty Pippen and Charles Oakley are very good friends, and then B.J. Armstrong and uh, Doc Rivers started in animated fashion, and then that seemed to settle down. Steal on Mason, and here's it from the crowd. Back for three. Rebound slapped home by Ewing. Patrick.
Patrick Ewing getting inside position. Mark Nitsch. Well, uh, this year New York team reminds me of the Bulls of uh, a couple years ago when we played the Lakers in the finals. Uh, we had that hunger, that, uh, that determination to, to go out and uh, win. You know, that's the Knicks right now. Somehow, in some way, uh, we have to overcome that and uh, go out and play uh, our uh, type of basketball. Was able to hit. At first, he wanted to beat Cartwright off the dribble one-on-one, -on -one, but then he saw the double team coming over, and Starks comes up with the score, but loses. Kicked it into the stands, but he was mad at himself, and apparently that was the view of the official Jack Madden who was not calling a technical. What do you think? There would have been no reason to call a technical. He wasn't mad at an official's call. He's just disappointed that he let the ball slip away. Rambling around, and there were mismatches. The big people wind up going right to the offensive boards. Pippen goes for the dunk, but misses. Chicago complaining that the ball was blocked on the way up. He turns the corner, Scotty Pippen goes for the dunk. The complaint there that the ball should have been out of bounds off of New York. You can but uh, since then, he has been on the floor for the most part in the final minutes of games. Jordan squeezing his way and firing it up. He thought he was fouled. And the Bulls coaching staff very upset. His Mason rejected it and tied up. Let's go back to the Jordan shot. You would say, what a terrible shot Michael Jordan took. But that's not a shot he intended. He thought the whistle was going to go off right now with the body contact. So he figures if the whistle's going off, let me at least get it up there. Maybe I'll get a three-point play out of it. No whistle. So what happens is you get a little bit of frustration. He thinks he draws body contact. The officials don't. Showing on the basketball court as well. Pippen got the step. On the front line of the Pippen will run the offense. Look out. Starks went barreling into Pippen. And then Starks in the face of Pippen who just looks to walk away. John Starks tries to run through Scotty Pippen, puts his head down, knocks Pippen back about five or six yards, and then both players smart enough to avoid throwing any kind of and we get a foul called against the Bulls. The screen is set by Pippen. Starks lowers the shoulders, sets it right into the waist area of Scotty Pippen. Pippen's not real happy about it, but smart enough to turn away rather than start something. You must set solid the entire afternoon by Chicago. Gives BJ the shot. Going with his second block, retracting King. now are very frustrated in contrast to what took place in games one and two where the Bulls four is the score. Shot clock at five. And Davis is crushed. Well, one Tar Heel to another. And it's a flagrant foul. Scott Williams called for the flagrant. The feeling here that this may have been a little payback in retaliation for the foul that was uh, delivered against Michael Jordan in the last game. The follow through and the fact that the body goes to the ground is what determines whether or not they're going to call it a flagrant foul. So, by the trapping defense that bothered the Knicks at the start of the game, and they have jumped to that big lead and have never been headed. Oh, King and Ewing looking to go. Stacey King having words. Now Pippen and Campbell. Mason is over. Scott Williams gets between. The whole incident started as Ewing was fighting for position down low. He brought his arm up high and King was hit in front of there so nothing else takes place. Fighting for position. Ewing brings the arm up and catches King in the face right there with the arm. He doesn't like it, a little push and shove, and then it escalates from there. And the officials discussing the incident.
and he was very upset about it. John 
Tatum stalks. When you take long shots from the... A crescendo developing here. The Bulls by one with a minute 25 remaining in the third quarter. Jordan went for the crossover. Michael Jordan is now two for two since he had the wind knocked down. And Ewing able to save it. Shot clock at eight. Here's Anthony. What you're about to say, and you go, Oh, why am I saying this? You try and get back at it again. Is that something you can relate to? No, not at all. Not at all. There's a steal by Tucker. Trent Tucker on the drive, rejected by John Starks, recovered by Scotty Pippen. Michael Pennyway. Trent Tucker from behind with the flick, but then not used to really being an outstanding ball handler, just can't get going, hesitate to give Starks, who has great leaping ability, a chance to get back. This, their last six shots. The Knicks with a 5-0 run. Shot clock at seven. Ewing again from deep. Yes! And it counts! These could be the defining moments in the career of Patrick Ewing, who is seeking Ewing out to set a pick. Here Starks changed his mind. Plenty of time on the shot clock, down to 10. Ewing for Smith. Smith. Smith, Smith, stop, Smith, stop the game by Pippen. What a play by Scotty Pippen. Final seconds, Jordan for Armstrong. And the Bulls have defeated the Knicks. Chicago Bulls with a couple of spectacular plays. Scotty Pippen stopping Charles Smith. Once again has come up big in this first quarter. Mason getting position and rejected by Pippen. Here is Ewing. Bulls with a three on two. The next two hustle back. Jordan for three. For the, the Ewing turnaround jump shot. And Ewing had bumped Park right away with his body to give him the space he needs to get a clean up. Oh. Michael Jordan fighting at home. The Bulls lead by three. A very late whistle. You thought that it was just a possession call instead of foul. Then a back cut by Jordan. His partner, Pippen, right on the money. Michael able to control with the great hands and convert. Rivers nearly picked it off. Ewing good. And Ewing putting the ball on Pippen. And then blocked by Jordan. What a play. Michael Jordan hustled back and rejected Patrick Ewing. But to go back to the beginning of that play, what a terrific effort. Sensational by Ewing, who may have hurt his shoulder a little bit. First of all, the seven-footer comes up with it. Then has the confidence in his offhand, left hand, to get it down the floor. Jordan, as he gets it, pulls that arm back. And we saw Ewing react as he came to the bench by grabbing that shoulder. Timeout has been called. 6.49 to go in the third. Spaces. 35 to go. Jordan fouled by Rivers. And now Jordan with some words for Rivers. And Jordan being ushered aside. Oh, Doug Rivers just went back at Michael Jordan. And they're being separated. Talk about competitive people. Doc Rivers. Every bit as competitive as you, you want on the floor. He's got an assignment. Do you read lips well? No. Clock is running down. Let's can't find the balls to get the foul. And Grant on the drive. He's fouled. It counts. Blackman with the foul. The Knicks could not chase the Bulls down. They could not get to the. Hey, what are you doing next? No, I'm busy. What's
look at that stat. Last 15 years, 106 teams have been down 0-2. Three have come back to win the series, make it four. The Chicago Bulls, as Scott Williams, concludes matters for a 96-88 victory. And it is Chicago going on to the NBA Finals. Chicago will attempt to three-peat.